Welcome to Encounter the Word. We at the Jesuit Institute offer this reflection every Sunday on the Liturgy of the Word, where we try to make sure that our reflection on God's Word helps us live God's Word in our daily lives. And so, let's pray together. Lord God, we give you thanks that we can gather as a community, to reflect upon your word and how your word invites us to respond at this moment in our lives and the life of our community and our society. Help us through our listening to deepen our ability to hear what you want of us so that we might live this word in practical ways in the days that are to come. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said to the multitude, Let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, What shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all that are far off, every one whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other words, and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about three thousand souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me, he revives my soul. Alleluia. He guides me along the right path for the sake of his name. Though I should walk in the valley of the shadow of death, no evil would I fear. For you are with me, your crook and your staff will give me comfort. Alleluia. You have prepared a table before me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Alleluia. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. Alleluia. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if when you do write and suffer for it, you take it patiently, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he trusted to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my own and my own know me. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not heed them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, today is Good Shepherd Sunday. It is fitting and right that we give thanks, for we have one shepherd, our risen Lord and Saviour. It is fitting, too, that we pray for all called to emulate him in their care for the flock, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our bishops and priests, and all who assist in shepherding the people of God, deacons, men and women religious, teachers of catechism, and all others who help animate our communities. Psalm 23 sets the tone for this Sunday. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. It details a common Old Testament theme. God is imaged as a shepherd leading a flock. Indeed, from the very first pages of Scripture, we are invited to understand that our Creator God seeks to care for us as God provides us with food, water, and a beautiful world, guides us on right paths, protects us from all danger, and brings us home. In the Gospel, Jesus identifies himself as the shepherd, consistent with his complete communion with God the Father. However, the reading from the Gospel underlines something striking that the psalm does not mention. It describes in some detail the intimacy of a relationship established between the shepherd and the sheep, a relationship founded on and maintained by both hearing and listening to the shepherd's voice. Firstly, the true shepherd is distinguished from impostors and interlopers who might seek to lead the sheep astray. These are described as thieves and robbers, and they scale the walls of the sheep pen. The true shepherd, however, enters by the, goat, the gate that has been opened by God the Father. Indeed, the shepherd and the sheep are beholden to a God whose providence has sent the shepherd to keep the sheep safe. Secondly, the shepherd enters and the sheep hear him calling them by name. This is the heart of the intimacy. The shepherd knows each sheep by name. 
they are not just a flock of sheep, indistinguishable from one another. The shepherd is not a generic shepherd, and the sheep are not generic sheep. Each one has a name that marks each sheep's uniqueness. The shepherd knows each one. Of course, this reminds us of the encounter between Mary Magdalene and the risen Jesus. On Easter Sunday at the tomb, weeping, she turned and saw him, but thought that he was the gardener. She did not recognize him until he called her by name, Mary. Thirdly, the sheep follow the true shepherd, not only because he called them by name, but because they recognize his voice as they walk behind him. Indeed, even as he leads them, he continues to address each one of them. His leadership on the way does not become generic formulae at any point. They are not reduced to one moving mass governed by general principles. Each one is cared for, encouraged where he or she might falter, assisted where each one might face obstacles, lifted up wherever each one might fall. They are moving together, shepherd and flock, and yet the shepherd is present to each one in his or her particularity. Fourthly, the sheep do not follow a stranger because the stranger is not speaking as the shepherd does. They do not recognize the stranger's voice because the stranger is not talking to them, to each one, in each one's joys and struggles, in each one's faith and doubt, in each one's particular humanity. We read this gospel this year within a particular context. The Holy Father has invited us to participate in a synod, a walking together on the way, following Christ as disciples, sheep behind their shepherd. More than ever, we are aware of the needs of each one, especially the most marginalized. In this synodal process, we are called to listen carefully to the voice of the sheep in all their diversity, the poor, the handicapped, those discriminated against for whatever reason, especially those who have fallen away because they have not heard the shepherds in the church address them in their particularity. Today's feast and the reading of this gospel can focus our prayer on the demand for grace for our shepherds. Lord, may they be shepherds after your heart, calling each one by name, leading each one in the unique path in which and to which they are called. Let's join in praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, friends. Lord, we give you thanks that we could encounter your word, that we could reflect upon your word, and help us now to deepen our reflections as we try 
to live out the invitation that you have for each one of us. And in so doing, become your faithful disciples. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to have you reflecting with us again next week.